In the beginning of the Japanese history, there were female entertainers called saburuku or serving girls. They were mostly wandering girls whose families were exiled from struggles in the late 600s. Some of the saburukus sold sexual services, while the saburukus with better education made a living by entertaining at high class social gatherings. After the imperial court moved the capital to Kyoto in 7 794, the conditions that would form the Japanese geisha culture began to arise. In traditional Japan, men were not constrained to be faith faithful to their wives. The ideal wife was a modest mother and manager of the home. Love had secondary importance. Uh, for sexual enjoyment and romantic attachment, men did not go to their wives, but to courtesans. In the 16th century, pleasure quarters were built, and in 1617, the Japanese regime assigned that a few areas in Kyoto would be pleasure quarters. Outside the quarters, prostitution would be illegal, and within the quarters, prostitution would be classified and licensed. The highest yu class was the foreigner of the geishas, and they were called oiren. Oirens were a combination of actresses and prostitutes. They performed erotic dances and skits. Odoriko, or dancing girls, were expensively trained as innocent dancers for hire. In the 1680s, they were popular entertainers in, in the private homes of upper-class samurais. These Odorikos were also the foreigners of the geishas. Many turned to prostitution. Those who were not teenagers of the Odorikos anymore could not use the name Odoriko, so they adapted the name geisha after the male entertainers. The pleasure quarters quickly turned to glamorous entertainment centers, not only offering sex, but they also entertained the clients through dancing, singing, and playing music. The very first geishas were men. They entertained the customers who were waiting to see the oirens or courtesans. Near the turn of the 18th century, the first entertainers called geishas appeared. The first woman to have called herself geisha was a prostitute in 1750. She was a skilled singer and this made the female geishas extremely popular in the 1750s. As the geishas became more widespread throughout the 1760s and the 1770s, many began working as entertainers rather than prostitutes. By 1800, geisha was considered a female occupation. Oiren began to fall out of fashion and was not as popular as the geisha. By 1830, the evolving geisha lifestyle was followed by fashionable women throughout the Japanese society. There were many classifications and ranks of the geishas. Some would have sex with their customers and some would strictly entertain with their specific art form. Prostitution was legal up until the 1900s, so it was practiced in many pleasure quarters throughout Japan. Young girls were sold to geisha houses. They worked as maid or servant. As they got older and became more educated in the geisha arts, they eventually be became geisha apprentices and accompanied geishas to tea houses at night. World War II brought a huge decline in the geisha arts because many of the women had to work in the factories. The geisha name lost some status during World War II because normal prostitutes started referring themselves as geisha girls to the American military to make money. The times following the war, many girls started to sell themselves. In the 1960s, a compulsory education law was passed in Japan, which made women able to choose a different way of life. This contributed to the declining geisha industry. Mieko Iwasaki was discovered at the age of three to become the heir of the Iwasaki Geisha House. She had to leave her real family and be adopted by the Iwasaki family. Her new family trained her as a Japanese Miyako, which was a woman of dance, and later as a Gieko, woman of art, which is what geishas were called in Kyoto, Japan. She later became the most well-known and most successful geisha of her generation. Mieko had an extremely successful and busy life. She had to entertain rich and famous people. She also attended dance and music lessons, photo shoots, and parties where she was hired to work. Most nights, she only got three hours of sleep, 
she was completely devoted to her job. At the age of 15, she decided to write a book about her life as a geisha, to educate people about the profession and to clear up misconceptions and prejudices. In her book, she explained how geishas were highly skilled, underpaid performers who made little or no money at all after spending so much time and effort into being a geisha. Mieko thought that her book may cause the profession to disappear, and after she retired, 70 other geishas retired as well, and many thought the profession had come to an end. She retired at the age of 29 because she no longer liked being a geisha, and she wanted her own life. History of Concubines In ancient China, successful men often supported several concubines. Chinese emperors could have thousands. How the concubines were treated varied based on social status of the male she was engaged with, and also the attitudes towards the con concubine of the first wife also mattered. The position of the concubine was usually inferior to the first wife, the concubine's children would also be inferior to the first wife's children. Concubines were supposedly on occasion buried alive with their masters to keep them company in their afterlife. It was common for rich males to hold a concubine for sexual pleasure and to ensure many children. A concubine is a woman who lives with a man in a marriage-like situation without the privileges of marriage. Additional wives required more wealth. Nice dress concubines promote a man's social status. Many concubines in ancient China had their own homes with, uh, with valuable possessions including fancy and elegant clothing and jewelry. The concubines did not enjoy the high status of the first wife, but they were still respected. Concubine Yang Yuan was China's most famous mistress and one of the four beauties of China. She was an imperial concubine of Emperor Wang Zong of the Tang Dynasty. She was originally supposed to marry a prince who was the son of Emperor Wang Zong, but the emperor quickly fell in love with her. She was naturally beautiful and had many talents, such as playing the lute, dancing, and singing. This, combined with her education, made her unique compared to the other beauties, and she became the emperor's favorite. The emperor became so obsessed with Yang that he lost control over his kingdom, so he had to execute Yang in order to prove that he could still rule. However, he still lost his power and the Tang dynasty declined. What are the differences in your opinion uh, between geishas and concubines? Well, the obvious difference is that geishas are from Japan and concubines are from China. Also. Concubines entertain uh, usually one man for a long period of time, while geishas uh, entertain uh, a crowd of men for a shorter period of time, such as one night. Another difference is that a geisha's primary job is to simply entertain and comfort men, and this duty does not require sex. Concubines were in relationships with the man. She could produce heirs, although her children would be inferior in status to the children of uh, the actual wife of the night. So, what are uh, the geishas like today in the modern society? Well, now all geishas enter the profession by choice. The usual motive for this is love for the traditional arts or attraction to glamour. Only the most dedicated women make a good geisha. Geishas today are to be found mostly in the former capital, Kyoto. The geisha house, however, has been suffering from the economic downturn in recent decades, and as a result, they have become less restrictive, and it is now possible for almost any tourist with a sufficient budget to have a dinner with a geisha, thanks to travel agencies and hotels serving as the go-between. Many Asian tourists come to Kyoto and dress up as geishas, and many Western tourists believe that these are real geishas. But real geishas are in fact very rare, so the geishas that most tourists see are in fact tourists themselves. Another issue geishas face is that tourists have become a burden by taking too many pictures of us. Can you mention a few similarities between uh, geishas and concubines? A similarity is that geishas and concubines work in groups, 
Geishas entertain their clients together, and the concubines share the same man. A third similarity is the appearance, such as the shoes, the robes, and the hairstyles with decorations. An exception is the makeup. So, what are concubines like today? The return of capitalism to China has also meant a major comeback for the concubine. Rich businessmen and party officials prove their wealth and power by the number of mistresses. And this is a major factor in the growth of corruption. Concubines are no longer kept hidden away behind closed doors. In modern China's far more open society, concubines can be seen in the shopping malls and cafes of the cities. Young women become concubines today for reasons of money and lifestyle, but also a way out of poverty. My son is already two years old, and my son's father is the same age as my father. I call him old man. He treats me well. Since I gave birth to a son, he bought me a house under my name and two shops under my son's name. My days are very comfortable. I never ask him about his business or family, nor press him to divorce. A woman's life is hard and her youth goes quickly, so I cherish the present.